It's been about a year since I upgraded from the Samsung Epic to the Note 2, and I haven't really done anything with the Epic in that time, aside from reinstalling the stock FCO9 gingerbread ROM. That was the newest official TouchWiz ROM available for the phone. So today I'm going to attempt to install Cyanogen Mod 11 along with the Notist kernel so we can get a little bit of Android KitKat going on that phone. I'm going to go ahead and start the Epic into the recovery menu here. I'm going to try to do all the normal resets and stuff, clearing the cache and factory reset and all that good stuff and then attempt to install the new ROM itself. Now the first time I tried this for some reason it seemed to start the installation okay and then it would restart and hang on this black screen here so what I ended up doing after this point was pulling the battery since the phone has no reset button going back into the recovery menu which this ROM upgrades and then using the upgraded recovery menu to reset everything one more time before trying to flash the ROM in the kernel again. After that little bit of rigmarole it did install successfully. It takes a little bit to start up here but it does make it to the first run setup wizard eventually. <laughs> So there we go, I've installed the ROM, I've done a few customizations and tweaks, updated a few things. Once you get done stepping through the setup wizard, it's going to dump you out here at the Trebuchet Launcher. Once you've made it that far, it's also a good idea to head back into the recovery menu one more time and install the GAPS. That's a zip file that installs annoying Google stuff like Gmail, Search, Google Framework, Hangouts, News and Weather and of course the ever annoying Android marketplace. All that stuff that nobody really wants but you basically have to have installed if you want to be able to get anything done. For example, YouTube won't run without the Google Framework installed. Maps is the same way. So there's really no way around that. Once that's all been addressed you can gaze upon Android KitKat in all of its glory. It works well enough. The interface is pretty responsive especially if you don't have much going on in the memory. We'll take a quick peek at the settings here. Standard Android settings menu, nothing really to write home about. You get some fun Cyanogen mod features in here. Uh, hardware specific features over here. I'll go into apps real quick. This is where this kind of falls short a little bit, and this isn't anything that's inherently wrong with Cyanogen mod. It's just the nature of the phone, and that is that it's only got half a gigabyte of RAM, and Android is a major pig when it comes to memory usage. So you can basically comfortably have one heavy application running at a time, like the browser or the Android Marketplace. But if you want to switch between them, you're going to find that it's always having to load the application back into memory once it's switched back to it. Other than that, as far as the phone's actual performance, it runs pretty well. Uh, I mean, you, you do run into some slowdowns in the browser, especially if you're loading a heavy web page. And that's actually an interesting thing to note here. This is the fault of Android KitKat. The browser no longer uses the stock Android web rendering engine. It uses basically Google Chrome. And that runs a little heavy, especially on these older devices, and it just doesn't render as fast or as polished as the stock Android browser from Jelly Bean and earlier would. So if you're planning on upgrading the Epic or any Android device for that matter to KitKat or newer and you relied on the stock browser or any browser that makes use of the stock browser for web browsing, that'll be something you'll definitely want to consider and keep in mind. The last thing I want to cover here before the battery dies on me is sound and video. You can go into DSP Manager here 
and go into the tab on the far right and that'll give you all the same audio customization options that Voodoo Control would have given. Unfortunately, it appears that this kernel does not support the color balance correction that was supported by other kernels with previous versions of Android. So you're stuck with this funky bluish greenish tint that CyanogenMod puts on there. I'm going to say it does look better than the stock ROM did, which was just a straight green tint that looked nasty and weird. And this doesn't look optimal either, but it is what it is, I guess. And that's Cyanogen Mod 11 M12 with Android KitKat on the Samsung Epic. I hope you found today's video entertaining and informative. And be sure to stay tuned to the all-new Channel 2012 for the latest in reviews, guides, food, computers, general around the house, and other high-quality, high-definition uploads. Thanks for watching.